Most draft picks that come in the National Football League aren't worth a score to piss anyhow. Like, most of them can't play. 50% of the first-rounders are busts anyhow. So you're going to tell me it's more important to, to get a, a little bit higher pick than it is to build a winning culture? Baloney. You guys are that, – that's garbage. Yeah, you made some very salient points there, including two different references to urine. Hey everyone, welcome on into Drinks with Banks. I'm Julie Stewart Banks. Happy New Year. We hope you had a safe and happy holiday season without seeing absolutely anyone in your family or your friend group. I am back in the New York groove right now, back in my studio apartment jail cell. I'm actually in quarantine right now because when you cross the border, I have to quarantine again. So I'm just the quarantine queen. But you know what? That's what happens when we are entering year two of the pandemic. But in all seriousness, Seriousness. We are still dealing with a virus that is very deadly, and we want to make sure everyone stays safe, and we are lucky to be able to work and create content and continue this show. And as we embark on 2021, which hopefully will be uh, at least slightly better than 2020, I'm very excited that my first guest is someone whose name or their nickname actually sort of rhymes with the show. We're about to have drinks with Stink. And with that, I'm very excited to be able to welcome in Mark Schlereth. You know him, three-time Super Bowl champion, two-time Pro Bowler. He has been with the NFL for 12 seasons, 13 years with ESPN. He is also the host of Stinkin' Truth Podcast with Mark Schlereth, none other than Mark Schlereth. Thank you so much for being on here today. What are we drinking and toasting to? Well, I am uh, what I drink. I, I probably drink... Uh... I don't, between 10 and 15 cups of coffee a day. So here is uh, to you, and here is to 2021, wow. and here is to being uh, pandemic-free at some point, hopefully. So I, I've got coffee. All right, coffee number 16 of the day. Cheers Something to a like better that. year. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so if you, have, if you have about 15 coffees a day, which is incredible, mm. um, you are a specimen. What What is the coffee like is it you have cream milk black sugar splenda what do we got i i throw a little cream into my coffee and and i'm good to go so that's kind of how i drink it and uh um you know which you know my dad makes fun of me for uh you know not hitting puberty yet uh so because i can't drink it straight you know black but that's where I go. I go a little bit of cream. Um, no sugar, no sweeteners, none of that. Yeah, I think you're onto something there. A lot of people like sort of what else you put in it versus a coffee. I, mm-hmm. I definitely like cream and sugar and all the the bad stuff for you, as they say. Right. But lots going on in the sports world, the NFL world. Hand up. Never thought we'd make it to the playoffs sort of on track as we are right now. And we enter into the NFL wildcard weekend with some very interesting matchups. Big news of the day. We are shooting this on a Tuesday. We know this airs Friday, but we have learned, of course, that Cleveland Browns head coach Kevin Stefanski and Two others, as well as offensive lineman Joel Batonio, are out with COVID. And they will not be in that elusive playoff game against the Steelers. When you first heard the news, you know, what's your initial reaction to it? As imperfect as the season was, um, it was perfect in its imperfection. I just, I was so thankful, you know, when people reach out to me and I get to do it on Fox and get to talk about games. I am essentially the COVID crew. I'm surprised I'm not doing this playoff game because I did a game with no coaches in Detroit because they had everybody. I had five or six coaches that had COVID. I did a game in Denver that had no quarterbacks um, because everybody had COVID. Right. Last week, I called the game in Carolina against the Panthers and Saints with no running backs. Um, on Friday afternoon, uh, Ty Montgomery was a slot receiver. On Saturday morning, he moved to running back, and then he ran for 100 and, I think 105, 108 yards versus Carolina. So he had, he had a 30-minute meeting about being a running back on Saturday to learn protections and went in there and did a phenomenal job. So, like, that's the season that we've, we've dealt with. And um, it's a shame because Kevin Stefanski's done such a great job 
uh, in, in Cleveland, and it's the first it's the first birth the Cleveland Browns have had in the playoffs since what, like 2002 or something yeah. crazy like that. And uh, it's that part is disappointing. It's disappointing that uh, you know that guys are going to miss that, that that Joel Bantonio, who's a really good player, is going to miss that opportunity. But that's you know that's 2020 in, in in a nutshell. That's the season that we've dealt with, and. I tell you, the sacrifices that players and players' families make. I think one of the things, you know, Julie, that was always interesting to me when I retired, um, I never really realized what I put my family through during the course of my career, what I put my wife and my kids through, what I put my parents through, because as an athlete, oftentimes you're so singularly focused, so myopic in your focus on what you're trying to accomplish that you live a fairly selfish existence. Um, to mm -hmm. do all this stuff. And I really never noticed until my son started playing professional sports and had injury issues and, and was fighting to, you know, to stay healthy enough to pitch and do all those things that I started to understand what I put my family through during the course of my career. So the sacrifice that you have to make as an athlete, the sacrifice that you make as an athlete's parents, as uh, uh, the family members of an athlete, you know, the, the wife and the kids and all those things, it is just so incredibly difficult. So tip of the cap to the NFL for getting it in, um, for getting it done. And, you know, the, the circus marches on, man, regardless if you're mm -hmm. if you're healthy, if you're not, if you've got COVID, if you don't, it's going to march on. That's one thing we learned about this year. And uh, and thankfully, I'm just thankful that it did. I'm, I really am, because I know it was an ex an escape for a lot of people to play fantasy, to, to sit around on Sundays, to get away from all the crap that has gone on. So I'm really I'm really thankful for the NFL because I thought this season was incredible. Right. And, and to some of those points, like within the reality that we have, like these are just things that are going to happen where if we are playing during the pandemic, there are going to be guys that are going to be out for a wild card game. And so it, it is par for the course in a way. We have to go to break in a second, but just as a former offensive lineman and we talked about Petonio, a guy that has been on the team for seven years, you know, he, he's not the he's not the the Baker Mayfields, the getting all the attention and understanding what his role is. How sort of how much do you feel for him not being able to play in this game? Oh, I'm, I mean, I'm incredible. It's you know, I, I have remorse for him. It's it's sad, um, you know, to be a part of that organization, have all the losing that they have had and then to finally get, you know, your um, to finally get your opportunity to play in a playoff game and then to be out with covid and, you know, to no fault of your own, I, I just yeah, mm -hmm. everybody is everybody is, you know, going through the protocols and getting tested every day and keeping their masks on and washing their hands. And hell, every one of us has stepped out of the car or whatever and walked into the grocery store and then, ah, oh, shoot, and had to go back to the car to grab our mask. I know it's not natural. And so mm -hmm. I, I know I know that, that the, the folks in the NFL, the guys and, and the, the coaches and everybody have done their best to adhere to the standards, adhere to the rules. Um, I had four people on my uh, on my uh, on my team on my production team uh, get COVID. Um, wow! You know, I was one uh, of of the six people that are our core people, uh, from producers and and ads and directors and uh, actually five people now that have got COVID. Mm. So of the six, uh, are actually seven that travel in our core group, only two didn't get COVID. Myself and our uh, PA. That's it. Hey. Wow, that's quite the specimen you got right there. Well, you and the PA, of course. Yeah, that, yeah, you didn't yeah. Get yeah. it? That's that, we got to see what's going through your blood to be able to fend off that that virus at it's, the moment. It's coffee, Julie. It's it's. <laughs> yeah, I drink too much coffee. It's the, it's a natural inhibitor, I think. Yes, 15 cups of coffee. Let's go. Yeah, that's right. We got a lot more to get to here with Mark Schlereth, three-time Super Bowl champion, two-time Pro Bowler. He is all over the media landscape, and we have uh, a lot to talk to you about the Broncos. They've been making some news this week as well when we come back on Drinks with Banks. Don't go anywhere. Hey guys, welcome on back to Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks. We're so fortunate to be able to be joined by three-time Super Bowl champion Mark Schlereth. Stink is here to be able to give us some insight on the Denver Broncos, of whom you won two Super Bowls with. And they this week announced that John Elway was 
reportedly moving up in the organization, leaving a vacant GM job. You've been on the record saying when he was the GM that you didn't trust him and had many other fun phrases of which I enjoy that you use. And how would you feel about what's going on right now with the Broncos? Yeah, I, I think it's good. I mean, there's so much uncertainty right now with uh, ownership uncertainty and obviously roster building uncertainty. This this organization just hasn't, you know, it, it hasn't done a good enough job as far as building a roster, a competitive roster on a year in and year out basis. And, you know, um, I applaud John for being able to step away from it um, and, and uh, hire a general manager and to have a different you know perspective, a different set of eyes doing that. So I think that's important. And. You know, I mean, we've been friends for a long time, but um, when it comes to roster construction and roster building, it just hasn't worked out. And, you know, obviously it worked out early when when he got Peyton Manning. But I think Peyton Manning and I'll give him all the credit in the world for signing Peyton Manning. But Peyton Manning brings all the prime free agents with him because Mm -hmm. people want to play with Peyton Manning because they know they're going to have a chance to win a world championship. And that's, you know, what happened. They went to two. They won one of them. Um it was a great move, but from a draft standpoint and um, just creating a football team and, and, and you know, and, and building a football team, um, this franchise has fallen short under the guidance of John Elway. So uh, I was, you know, I was happy that he decided to, to move up or step over or whatever it is. And we'll see exactly, you know, what they do. Uh, you know, the problem in Denver right now is this is a proud, proud franchise that has fallen on some pretty hard times here the last five years. And um, and it's one of the you know, it's one of the great franchises in the National Football League that over the last couple of years has not been able to to produce an afternoon rating. And, you know, you always think about, well, when you're in the TV business, you think about TV ratings, what rates, what doesn't rate, how are we going to make this thing work? And um, in all the years that Mr. Bowen operated the Denver Broncos, they were a guaranteed afternoon rating in that four o'clock, 425 slot. The last two years, they can't guarantee a rating for the Denver Broncos game. So that's a problem. That is a huge problem. And so that needs to be fixed. This next general manager coming in, I hope he's, you know, it's one thing to appoint a guy, a general manager or a gala general manager. It's another thing to empower that person. And I just truly hope that that person is empowered to create a philosophy, create an identity and go after that uh, philosophy and that identity of football. So I hope that I hope that definitely uh, exists here as uh, as they transition into kind of a new system. Right. And speaking of teams that have a difficult time getting ratings, another one that you were on and won the Super Bowl with in 1991, sort of like the it time of a franchise was uh, with Washington. We saw the, the the very interesting way that they were able to get into the playoffs against the Eagles that uh, made some controversial moves, let's just say, with Doug Peterson um, not playing Jalen Hurts in the fourth quarter. If you were on the Washington football team on Sunday, how would you feel about what happened? I'd feel great. We got to win. I, and listen, man, you know, I, I hear all the baloney of, of people saying, hey, uh, I want to play that guy when he's at its best. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't baloney. I want to play everybody when they have the flu. They don't feel good. Um, they're hurt because uh, I want to whip their ass. So that's that's how I that. So I if I was Washington, I'd feel great. Now, if I was on Philadelphia, I'd be pissed. Um, mm-hmm. I'd be pissed at the organization. I'd be pissed at Doug Peterson. Um, you know, so you're asking me to go out here as a football player and to lay it on the line for you to play injured, to play hurt, because every guy that's playing in week 17 is injured. And it's not good enough to play hurt. You got to play injured. You got to play well injured. I made a career of doing it, um, and and that's what you're that's what you're expecting. Uh, you know, Jalen Hurts is an incredible story to me because I go back to his college career when he got benched at halftime. You know, right. of a big playoff game, right? And you, you're thinking, like, here's a guy that understands he's 25 and two with Alabama. He gets benched. Tua comes in, drives him down. They score a touchdown. At that moment. In your life, you understand that you will never play quarterback at Alabama again. Your career there is done, kaput, finished. And, you know, I think the majority of us would be on the sideline pouting. He's the first guy to run down to congratulate Tua. When was the last time any of you celebrated somebody else's success like it was your own? When were you so selfless that you ever had the opportunity to do that? I mean, you get the opportunity all the time. But when were you so selfless that you you forgot about 
your own heartache and misery and, cel- and celebrated somebody else's success. Mm. That guy you can win with. I want yeah. that guy on my team. And I know he wasn't playing well at the time, but he had played well, you know, over the course of several games. And you still were in that game 17-14. And to tell me that, hey, I want to see what Nate Sudfield can do. You, he's been on your roster since 2017. You know he can't play. I mean, you know, you know what he is. So, I, like, don't don't feed me a line of, you know, don't know what, what's the old saying? Don't pee down my leg and tell me it's raining. That was garbage. And um, <laughs> and if I was you know, if I was playing for Philadelphia, I would lose respect for the head coach and I'd lose respect for the organization, because if the organization is saying, hey, you know what, that that moves us up three or four spots in the in the draft order. Hey, most draft picks that come in the National Football League aren't worth a score to piss anyhow. Like, most of them can't play. 50% of the first-rounders are busts anyhow. Yeah. So you're going to tell me it's more important to to get a, a little bit higher pick than it is to build a winning culture? Baloney. You guys are mm-hmm. – that, that's garbage. Yeah, you made some very salient points there, including two different references to urine, which I was I, – yeah. I heard you use the other one before I scored a piss, but uh, peeing down your leg and tell me it's raining – those are those are great. I think that's your wheelhouse, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, body fluids. I am the Jason Bourne <laughs> of poop in my pants. So I uh, like I, you know, I am I am really lock solid on that. Yeah, yeah. That is that is that is where you live. That is your world. All right. We have a whole lot more we want to get to with Mark Schlereth uh, with a game that we've played on this program before, and our super fans, all of the thousands and thousands of watching, will remember Truth or Sip. We're going to have fun with Stink after this on Drinks With Things. Hi, I'm Kirk Morrison, and I'm having drinks with Binks. Welcome on back to Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks. We've got Mark Schlereth here, and we're playing Truth or Sip, one of my uh, favorite games here on the show. And we are sipping on coffee today. So how the game goes, for those of you who don't know, I'm going to ask Mark some questions. If he doesn't want to answer them, he can take a sip of his coffee. So it'll just be overly caffeinated by the end of this game, or we will just know all of the secrets Mm -hmm. that he has. So let's get going. Uh, Mark, which powerhouse team will most likely flame out early in the playoffs? So one of the things I worry about, I'm not totally worried about Kansas City, but I worry about when you have a bye week, you're like your offense is stagnant. So you think about them. They didn't really play anybody in week 17. Now they're going to have a bye week. Then they come out. And so when you're talking about rhythm and offense, um, when you're a team that just wants to throw the ball, you really don't want to run the ball. Oftentimes, if you get out of rhythm doing that, sometimes the best way to get yourself back into rhythm is just to line up in two tights and, you know, and a full back and just play a little smash mouth football make the defense defend that, make the defense have to run up there and then get some play action stuff off of that to get you in a rhythm. So it always scares me a little bit. The difference between rest and rhythm is important. Mm. KC would KC would concern me a little bit in that regard. Uh, they don't want to run the ball. They just want to throw the ball. They just want to be dynamic. So uh, that, would, that would concern me a little bit. Um, who else? I mean, obviously, I love Buffalo. Uh, I love what Buffalo is doing. Um, Saints, Drew Brees, his rib injury, they haven't defended the run as well lately. Um, like, they they concern me a little bit. What's happened to them in the playoffs yeah. the last couple of years, that would concern me a little bit. It sounds like you said, KC, even though Andy Reid's quite good off of a bye week, I'm being told. I don't just have that information. Sort of right. No. He, I'm going to no, hold you he, to that. All right. But he's been on two bye weeks in a row. So, you know what I mean? Okay. So, two bye, two bye weeks in a row. Right. Tell your researcher, sure. Carol Sand. Okay, researcher. <laughs> yeah, you heard you heard the man. <laughs> we don't have a researcher. That's the best part. Yeah. Who would you not want to see win another Super Bowl? Big Ben, Rogers, or Breeze? Big Ben, Rogers, uh, or Breeze? Wow. Uh, 
I like all I like all those guys. I would like to see I would uh, if I had to pick between one of those three it'd be Big Ben. To not win, yeah. Yeah, I I love I, you know, uh, Breeze, I mean Breeze would be great over only quarterback to throw over 80,000 yards. I think eventually Yeah, we're not looking at the good. We just want to yeah. see who we want to not win it. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go Ooh. with uh I'm going to go even though Pittsburgh was my childhood team, I'm going to go Big Ben. He's got two. Rodgers has one, Breeze has one. So, yeah, I'm going that, – that makes sense. Right. Big Ben, boo, we don't want you to win. Yeah. Okay, final question. Which long-suffering fan base, Bills, Browns, or Bucks, least deserves a playoff win? Gosh, now see, this will get me – see, you, you got to be careful because the Bills Mafia can really get after you, right? Oh, yeah, that's why we call truth or sip, baby. These are not easy questions. Yes, yes. Uh, Tampa Bay. It's been a while, but it's not. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Buccaneers. Tom Brady's got six freaking yep. Super Bowls. Yeah, it's got to be. Even though he's the world's greatest American, I'm gonna go with the Bucks. Bucks. Yes, I I agree with you on that. Okay. I think. Hey, Bills and Browns, baby. And then Buffalo went to four straight Super Bowls, which is amazing. Didn't win oh, any yeah. of them. And, a lot yeah. Of yeah. So they, tough, they all deserve a Super. Bowl. They all deserve a, at least a playoff win. Yeah, all of them but the Bucks, as we have now come here to the right. conclusion on Truth or Sip with Mark Schlereth. No sips, just all the truth. We got yeah, more. Well, I, Let's I, think I, coming up. I, after I, I did break. drink some coffee while we were doing that, so. Hey guys, we've had an awesome time drinking and binking here with Mark Schlereth. And before we let you go, we got to ask you about friend of the show. Trey Wingo was on our first episode of the pandemic, and he told us that his favorite person ever from ESPN was you, Mark Schlereth. Does that hold true? Is that feeling mutual for you? Oh, yeah. Like uh, Trey is is definitely my work wife. And uh, uh, we used to call him sensei because, uh, you know, from a television standpoint, the guy is the well, first off, the guy is photographic. Anything that he's ever read or seen, he remembers verbatim. He would tell me things about myself that I didn't know. Like, oh, don't you remember in the third quarter against Dallas in 1992 when you, uh, I'd be like, no, I walk out the garage. I don't remember why I walked out there. How am I going to remember what I did in 92? Like, and, but he can. He's a an absolute freak show. So, yeah, absolutely love Trey Wingo. Oh, that is great to see. And I know you guys have been collaborating since your ESPN days. And yes. We do got to get a, a Super Bowl prediction from you. Who are we going to see battle it out in Tampa in front of hopefully not a lot of fans? You know, uh, I, I can't take Kansas City because I hate Kansas City with the white hot intensity of a thousand suns. So I'm going to go Bills because I love the Bills and I don't want to be on the bad side of the mafia. Um, and I'm going to go uh, Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers. Oh, that would be. Nice. I think those two quarterbacks, by the way, Aaron Rodgers should probably be the MVP. I, I would vote Josh Allen second, and then yeah. I would go to, I mean, I mean, the MVP award is ridiculous. Anyhow, it's become a, you know, it's all about uh, the quarterbacks anyhow. So, uh, and then I would go uh, Patrick Mahomes third in that, in that list of quarterbacks. Well, Josh Allen is playing up to that Rodgers MVP caliber, and that would be such a tasty matchup of fan bases. It would just, mm. it would be, again, they'd be watching from from very, very, very far away from the action, but it would be a lot of fun. Uh, you know Super Bowls well, and we can't thank you enough for being here on the show today. Where can we find you next? Um, shoot, I don't know. I mean, you can find me on my podcast at The Stink of Truth. Uh, and other than that, I'm just bouncing around, you know, waiting for uh, waiting for next season, waiting for 2021 to start. I, I, and Fox Sport, FS1, Fox Sports 1, um, I don't know when we'll start traveling again to go back and do studio shows, but uh, I can't wait till they open it back up so I can go out there and doink around a little bit. It's great. That studio is beautiful. It is unlike this studio in my studio apartment in Manhattan. Guys, thanks so much for watching us here on Drinks with Binks. You know where we'll be every Friday night and on our social at Fubo Sports, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube as well. I, again, I've done this show for a year and a half. I still can't remember that final line. Bottoms up, bitches. 